subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. The ancient Roman city of Pompeii is an archaeological wonder. It's one of the world's greatest archaeological sites. Because it is so well preserved, and we'll see in a little bit why, archaeologists continue to make new and impressive findings constantly from Pompeii. The latest finding that was announced on Saturday is that of a thermopolium or a fast food street stall which is extremely well preserved and very colourful. Analysis of this thermopolium also gives us insights into what the citizens of Pompeii love to eat on the streets. In this video, we'll talk about the city of Pompeii, what happened to it, the discovery of this thermopolium, and we'll also talk a little bit about how analyses are done on archaeological findings to understand the dietary habits of ancient citizens. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Pompeii is located in Italy and was a bustling colourful city in 79 AD or 79 CE. But the city was located just about 8 to 10 kilometres from the base of the volcano Mount Vesuvius. As most of us might be aware, the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in the year 79 completely destroyed Pompeii. Not just Pompeii, but also the neighbouring cities of Herculaneum, Oplontis and many other settlements. When the volcano went off, it released dust and ash and rocks for up to 33 kilometres into the sky. The volcano released 100,000 times the energy that was released by the atomic bomb at Hiroshima. It deposited 4 to 6 metres of ash overnight on the city of Pompeii. Of course, this killed every single living thing, but there was so much of ash that it completely preserved everything that was underneath. It is thought that in the volcanic eruption that lasted two days, more than 2,000 people definitely died and some estimates say about 15,000 people died. We don't know the actual death toll and the only eyewitness survival accounts we have are two letters that were written by Pliny the Younger. Of course, Pompeii is now a tourist site and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So this was the context for why we find so many extremely well-preserved remains constantly in the city of Pompeii. This is a city that was completely just suddenly frozen in time overnight. So much so that we know a tremendous amount about the everyday life of citizens who lived here almost 2000 years ago. It's also the reason why we keep excavating so many things in Pompeii because there's constantly so much to discover. We've been excavating since 1748 and more than one third of the city has still not even been touched. In a part of the city at the excavation site called Regio 5, archaeologists two years ago started to discover what looked like a stall where people cooked on the streets. Archaeology and paleontology both require really, really, really careful process of digging and excavation so work doesn't get done quickly. It's a slow process and that's the only way to ensure that there's no damage. The researchers were at it and digging all of this while and the full thing was finally revealed on Saturday. It is magnificent. The showstopper, of course, is the thermopolium or the fast food stall that was discovered at the intersection of two really busy streets in the city. The snack bar is very ornate, it's very colourful, it has frescoes on it and many polychrome patterns, paintings and images. On the thermopolium, thermo means hot, Poleo means to sell, so it was a place where hot stuff was being sold, basically a street food stall. And Pompeii has about 80 of these already, so it was clearly something that was very popular. On this new thermopolium itself, there are images of animals which were on the menu. This included ducks and chickens being prepared for cooking. There were also other images such as those of a sea nymph riding a sea horse, an image of a chained dog whose chain actually had a graffiti of a curse word against the owner or another employee of the shop. And there were many other findings as well. There were many amphoras or amphorae, you know, the tall Greek jars with two handles. There was a water tower and a fountain also discovered. 
there was also a painting of the thermopolium itself complete with amphorae and jars two human remains were found as well one was that of a 50 year old man who was found near a child's bed he was likely too old to run away when the volcano went off Another one was someone who had just opened one of the pots of food and had a surprised look on his face. Pompeii is one of those places where we have such excruciating level of detail almost literally because of the way people died and ash was deposited. All the human bodies that were buried under ash decayed, but the ash had formed a mold around them into which you could pour stuff and create perfect replicas of details of these human beings who had died there including the expressions on their faces when they died and this is actually the first time such a full site has been excavated in its entirety in pompeii so we also know what was around the thermopolium as well the first way we could guess what was eaten at this thermopolium is just by analyzing food remains this thermopolium was operating and was likely working on the day of the eruption or the day before so it wasn't empty it had food remains Archaeologists discovered remains of duck bone fragments of fish and pigs and goats and snails. A lot of it was also mixed together and cooked. Fava beans which were used to modify the taste of wine were discovered at the bottom of one of these containers called a dolium. So at Pompeii they served wine on the streets. A dolium is a large clay pot and the archaeologists said that when they removed rocks and ash from this container that had the remains of fava beans they could actually smell the wine through their masks. In another dolium they discovered the skeleton of a mouse. So archaeologists have concluded that this indicates that this dolium was a store for grains and the mouse had gotten in. Other dolia showed evidence of pork and fish cooked together and also a soup or stew made of fish and sheep and snails. Further analysis over the coming weeks will give us more details about the plants and vegetables that were used in these foods as well. Plant remains are harder to analyze than animal remains because plants decay very quickly and don't have bones. Now how do we analyze and find out what people ate through archaeological evidence A lot of it we can know from the context and environment in which different kinds of containers are used A lot of pottery also has art on it to show what it was used for If plants are burnt when cooking that evidence remains for a lot longer because of charring In fact just in Pompeii we've actually discovered hot charred foods covered in ash like meals on tables and loaves of bread in ovens but we also perform chemical protein and lipid analyses on vessels we can use infrared spectroscopy gas liquid chromatography and gas chromatography mass spectrometry to examine remains on cups and plates Bear in mind that most ancient places used earthenware or vessels that are made of clay and mud sometimes wood sometimes stone even we know that these materials absorb foods that you put in them even today when we eat oily and spicy foods we notice that plastic or glass or even china or porcelain can stain sometimes and these materials were not available back then So earthenware soaked up a lot of food and especially fats and analyses of the vessels gives us a good insight into what was stored in them and what people ate. It is in fact using lipid analysis that just a few weeks ago we discovered that the Harappan diet actually consisted of a lot of meat. We can even use more complex technology such as electron spin resonance to understand the temperatures at which foods were cooked and consumed and stored. At the Regio 5 site where this thermopolium was uncovered, all analyses are expected to be concluded by March and the site will then open up for tourism as well. 